Bonjour, mes amis. Dave, the Cardi Galair, Grinchy, Anna Sorum, Mar Ardver, Valia Clea, Chapton Shaw, the Montreal, Dun, Comora, Tauta Shaw, Comora, Ta, Antauta, the Fubble, Greylock, and the Cahrock Shaw, August, and Fubble of Gutene. It's a great honour uh, for me as Lord Mayor of Dublin to stand with you here today in this important commemoration that, uh, as the representative of the Irish Embassy has said, uh, has been carried on by the Irish community and friends of the Irish community for 153 years. Uh, this uh, commemoration of the dead of the Great Hunger uh, must be one of the longest running uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, this stone, I believe, must be one of the first to memorialise those uh, who died in the Great Hunger here on this side of the Atlantic. Uh, it's a special honour here to, uh, to be here with uh, Mayor Valerie Plant, and I commend her for being here today uh, to join us. And also uh, the Minister uh, who spoke, and uh, the representative of the Mohawk uh, people, and all the other distinguished guests. The plug. <laughs> so many speakers, they've worn out the microphone. <laughs> the, uh, I want to commend uh, Victor and uh, this committee and everybody involved uh, in the effort to ensure that not only uh, is this sacred place saved, which it now surely is, but that it will be enhanced and it will become part of a memorial park and hopefully other uh, suitable uh, developments uh, for uh, the 6,000 uh, or more that we commemorate here. And indeed it is very poignant and I found it quite moving having seen photographs of this memorial to arrive here for the first time and to contemplate that where we stand are buried the bones of men, women and children to the number of 6,000 or more. And people, previous speakers did pay tribute to the many, many thousands of Irish who came here and pay, played such a huge role in the development of uh, the city of Montreal and, in, uh, and of Quebec uh, in general and of Canada in general. Uh, but unfortunately, these 6,000 didn't have that opportunity. Uh, they were counted among perhaps the the, the, the healthier who were put on steamboats and brought up the St. Lawrence River. But as we know, ship fever broke out, typhus, and they died before they had a chance to have any life uh, in this country. And we remember them uh, with sadness and also with pride. We should also put uh, this in the context of the time. On the one hand, you have those who were ultimately responsible for the great hunger, and I say the great hunger on Angortamar rather than the famine, because there was sufficient food in Ireland to feed the population. Trevelyan, who was mentioned in the song The Fields of Athen Rai, as sung by the Trinitones, that name is, occurs in the song, Trevelyan. Trevelyan was the chief British civil servant who was responsible for Ireland during the great hunger. And he, his attitude to Ireland and the Irish people was summed up in one quote when he said, the real evil with which we have to contend is not the physical evil of the famine, but the moral evil of the selfish, perverse, and turbulent character of the people. Bastard. This was this man's attitude to the Irish people. And sadly, it was mirrored by others in the ruling class of the British Empire. And as a result, the Irish people but other peoples also throughout the world uh, suffered the fate that they suffered. So what uh, the committee here, the community here is doing is extremely important to keep that memory alive. I was also reminded when I saw the inscription uh, on the stone, 1847-1848 uh, was the period when uh, these deaths occurred and mention was made of the Montreal flag. Well, beside it, you see the Irish tricolour. Uh, in the year 1848, 
The Irish tricolour was brought from Paris by Thomas Francis Marr and other members of the Young Ireland movement to symbolise unity between Irish people of all religious denominations and traditions uh, in support and in pursuit of the freedom of Ireland as a republic. So it's very poignant also that our flag dates from 1848, the height of the, the great hunger when uh, our brothers and sisters who are buried here uh, perished. So I hope that your efforts will be successful, that the last resting place of these men, women and children will be fully respected and that a fitting memorial will be erected to honour their memory. And I know that a campaign to do so has been ongoing, not for the past few years, but indeed since the start of the last century. And we, we honour not only uh, the, the Irish dead who lie here, but those citizens of Montreal who came to their aid. Indeed, the mayor himself, uh, John Mills, who has been mentioned, uh, died as a result of his uh, efforts to assist uh, the Irish uh, in this place. Uh, the religious sisters were mentioned, again, numbers of whom died uh, because of their efforts to assist. And people of other denominations and traditions also who came here and uh, who died. The Mohawk representative mentioned that uh, her nation also assisted the Irish. And in uh, our uh, mayor's residence in Dublin, we have a plaque on the wall to honour the Choctaw Nation, who also came to the aid of the Irish during the Great Hunger and sent aid, even though they themselves had been dispossessed, displaced as indeed the Mohawk were, and removed from their lands. But they uh, felt a fellow feeling with the Irish and with those who were suffering, and they, they extended the hand of friendship and the hand of aid. And this reminds us that uh, Mon both Montreal and Dublin, and we are friendship cities for the past few years, both cities are diverse, cities of different traditions and ethnicities, and, but cities of citizens living, working, studying together to build a better society. The highest uh, ideal of the Irish people has been to build a united independent Ireland where all are equal, where the denominations, religious denominations and other labels are set aside and to paraphrase the words of Wolf Tone, in their place, the common name of Irish citizen. And that's still, I believe, our highest ideal, the highest ideal of the Irish people at home and uh, of our diaspora and friends of Ireland ab abroad. And the, the diaspora has had and continues to have a tremendous role in the development of Ireland, the completion of our national story, politically, socially, economically, and culturally. And in mentioning the cultural aspect, I think it's very important also to uh, remember that the Great Hunger was also an act of cultural genocide because it almost extinguished the Irish language. And the Irish language survives today despite what happened. The vast majority of those who perished here, uh, the 6,000, would have been Irish speakers. The vast majority of those who perished in Ireland on the, on the Atlantic crossing and so on would have been drawn from the Irish language community. And the Irish language itself was almost destroyed and wiped out. And indeed, this is something that I'm sure uh, the indigenous peoples here uh, in uh, Canada and across the Americas uh, would be familiar with, that we have lost so many languages and the loss of a language is a loss to all of humanity. So that's something that we should also remember. But the Irish language hasn't been extinguished and there are people here uh, in Montreal learning Irish and promoting Irish. And we could continue to do that because that in itself would be a great living memorial to the people who lie here uh, in this sacred place. And our greatest memorial will be uh, in Ireland to see uh, our country united, to see our country sovereign, to see our country equal uh, for all uh, to live in.
And finally, to say also that the other living memorial that we need to put in place is our solidarity, because as we know, we have today across the world many millions of people suffering hunger, deprivation, and indeed acts of genocide uh, comparable to the great hunger. Only last week, uh, in fact, at this very time last week, uh, in the Mansion House in Dublin, uh, I welcomed uh, representatives of the Rohingya people from uh, Myanmar, Burma, who are being subject currently to genocide by the military regime in that country. And numbers of them have come to Ireland. They've been welcomed uh, in Ireland, just as the Irish were welcomed here uh, in Quebec and Montreal and Canada generally. And that, that is a real act of solidarity. And I think we also need uh, to extend that hand as well. So to conclude, and as the rain comes down, uh, Irish you, weather. You, 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 wait, you wait until the rain to call me, Victor, <laughs> but I won't hold it against you. Um, I want to commend everybody, especially those, uh, the older generation here, who perhaps in days when there weren't so many people uh, on the parade, who kept it going, who kept the memory alive, and who ensured that today we can look forward to a real memorial to uh, cherishing our heritage, to cherishing our future. And uh, it's been a huge, huge privilege for me to be here. Ramila, Mila Madrid.